At 92, William Shatner has eclipsed the tired, lost era of Hollywood glitz. He's become grounded with fans as a friend, embarked on globe-trotting travel with punk rock icon Henry Rollins, left Earth's atmosphere in a real space vehicle, taken positions on political matters that cover such a wide spectrum that many people find it hard to pigeonhole his views. He's written novels and nonfiction, and now is speaking up for not just the character he played nearly 60 years ago and for a number of years after that, but for the importance of legacies, biological, human reality, and canon in storytelling. Hi everyone, I'm Gardner Goldsmith for MRC TV, and here's the story. The man best known for playing Captain James T. Kirk on the original 1966 to 69 Star Trek, and of course the subsequent cartoon series in the massively successful film franchise, well, he just acknowledged what many realistic people have noticed when it comes to the direction in which Star Trek's parent company is taking the Federation. Shatner, the actor who helped keep the parent corporation Paramount in the green for decades, notes that the boardroom executives, the showrunners, the promotional pencil pushers seem to be afraid of James T. Kirk and the character traits he exhibits. As Gabriel Hayes writes for Fox News, quote, legendary Star Trek actor William Shatner recently expressed his belief that Paramount will never bring back his iconic Captain Kirk role for upcoming seasons or franchise spin-offs because they feel threatened by the character. Which sure is strange, because the original Trek broke thematic ground, one might think would cement the character of Kirk as one for the woke crowd to admire. Not only did creator Gene Roddenberry utilize a cipher of the One World UN mega government for his idyllic federation, even utilizing UN symbology for the United Federation of Planets logo, he populated the Starship Enterprise with a multiracial, multinational cast of strong, admirable men and women. Roddenberry also introduced the first white person, black person, or whatever terminology is acceptable nowadays, kiss through the characters of Kirk and Lieutenant Uhura, played by Nichelle Nichols. You know, storytelling is a delicate mix. Sure, Kirk kissed a lot of ladies across the galaxy, but he always disengaged when he had to make a choice between the immediate romance and long-term morals. He focused on doing what was right on the mission of his crew and the futures of the far-off people he was visiting. Evidently, it's the strong, action-oriented alpha male that Paramount now doesn't like. Quote, Shatner, who played the popular Captain James T. Kirk in the original run of the sci-fi series and movies until the 1990s, told his fans on social media that he doesn't think he will ever reprise his role in Paramount Plus's current Star Trek universe, suggesting the studio's producers are erasing the past of the franchise. And it's not a knock against Mr. Stewart or his iconic character from The Next Generation to observe that the Trek producers of the later era intentionally strove to make his Jean-Luc a more thoughtful captain who might relegate the physical action to his number one, the second in command, Riker. None of the figures from original Star Trek to Next Generation and on are mutually exclusive. They can stand for their own attributes and viewers can appreciate them as long as the characters don't seem artificial, as long as the stories work for the sake of the tale and not for an artificial, tiresome attempt to push wokeness at the cost of story. The more that producers and writers tilt the balance of their efforts towards wokeness, the less popular the stories and characters will be. Sadly, as Mr. Shatner appears to have noticed, many at the top who control Paramount Trek seem more desirous of pushing their socio-political agenda than they are of telling good stories. 
and they seem intent on memory holing the titanic figure of Kirk that looms so large over the entire Trek endeavor. Writes Hayes, quote, One user asked Shatner, What do you think about all the negativity about Sir Patrick's announcement? There's a Picard movie script in the works. Shatner began with a positive response, stating, I think that a new movie with Sir Patrick is wonderful news. In a follow-up, another user asked, But will we ever see Captain Kirk again? All you have to do is look at the Paramount Plus graphics to answer that question, he replied. And regardless of the message, when viewers see studio executives dominating a tale, well, that undermines the goal of telling an engaging story. And it's just a bad move. What Paramount is doing with its new Trek posters and packaging, what Mr. Shatner and others have noticed thematically tells us that the studio not only isn't interested in what many of us loved about original Trek, it signals that they're going to pursue this agenda to the detriment of storytelling. Is a franchise like Star Trek now just a shell? Just wood, paint, and promotional trappings? And could that actually be a metaphor to American principles and the U.S. Constitution? Are these all simply universally usable masks that anyone with an agenda can wear? Empty tatters of something successful they can fill with their own plans. Is Star Trek a political tool rather than an ongoing set of enjoyable tales ensconced in a universe with established rules and principles and stories and characters that made it admirable? And are we to look at the work of the man behind Kirk and disregard his efforts to promote the series and the importance of good storytelling? Why can't Paramount acknowledge the fantastic things Kirk and Shatner offered us rather than silently canceling the character and the work of the actor in favor of bland, obvious, anti-entertaining wokeism? One thing's for certain. They can try to erase Kirk, but his figure is too potent and likable to be wiped away. Even in his absence from the Star Trek PR, Kirk and Shatner loom larger than everything that the studio might throw in front of us. Thanks for being here. Please remember you can find us on Rumble where they don't censor our videos. Please follow us there. Of course, you can find our videos for MRC TV at YouTube as well. And always go to MRCTV.org. That's MRCTV.org. You'll find the whole team there. While you're there, check out the MRC store and consider donating to the Media Research Center. You can find me on Twitter. I am uh, at Guard Goldsmith. I mean, X, at Guard Goldsmith. And you'll also be able to find me on Gab as at Gardner Goldsmith. And please look for our Facebook group for MRC TV, as well as TikTok and Instagram. Uh, you'll, you'll be uh, entertained, I think, by the, all the different comments that you see on all those platforms. There's a lot of smart people, aren't there? Thanks so much for watching, everybody. For MRC TV, I'm Gardner Goldsmith.